Sorry, Tobias, we had to spill your story there. <sighs> I'm pretty sure it was him. If it's not, sorry, <laughs> Tobias. Still a good story, though. This week, we drink beers that scream spring to us. This is episode 108 of The Malting Hour. What's the hat sound the hops got yeast and speech? This the molten hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends you wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The molten hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. People, people take your home. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts. With Brandon Winninger. And coming off the heels of our spring cleaning episode, what better thing to do than get more beer? It's our spring <laughs> beer episode. Talk Beers. about more sp- spring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> spring stuff. And, uh, you know, clear out the cellar or like me, buy old beer and, uh, you know, then buy more beer to drink. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, living in Chicago, and I think a lot of people in the Midwest would agree that spring is probably one of the greatest times of the year, only because it's so freaking cold and it's like dreary. It doesn't, it didn't used to normally bother me so much, but for some reason, like this year, I am ready for winter to be done. I mean, it's officially spring, but I, I am ready for warmer weather and being outside and drinking beers that aren't just you know heavy stouts and shit like that <laughs> i gotta unplug the fridge sorry <laughs> okay i hate that there's two of them back there that i'm like <laughs> well, I feel like in Zencaster it doesn't really pick it up. Too <clears throat> no, but I I started hearing it a little bit on here, and I'm like, mm, that's gonna bother me. Like if I'm sure. listening to it now. So, all right. Well, I put uh, a minute forty five to uh, make a little edit, so I'm gonna jump in here. Brandon, what about you? Right, would you agree with that? Like it's it's there. We're drinking so many like. Not so many, but there's a lot of like heavy beers and stuff like that. Uh, that when springtime rolls around, you know, it's kind of kind of nice. Yeah, like winter. I mean, it, traditionally for me has been like the the stouts and the the bigger beers. Um, and and we've even said like I can do those year round, but they're just so much more welcoming in the cold weather. Uh, and then I look forward to kind of new, like refreshing, light things. Um, and then it, it's funny because it's the cycle where, like, you progressively get hoppier through the summer. <laughs> and then it's yeah. like, oh, and then, oh a barrel aged something. And then it's like, down the slope we go. <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. So these, we decided that we would do springtime beers, beers that we enjoy when the weather gets a little bit warmer. Uh, Brandon and I have no idea what we're drinking. We're in separate places again, just because it's easier. Um, Brandon, why don't we start with you? Sure. What are you drinking first? Um, because I felt it was appropriate for today, I grabbed Off Colors Beer for Ball Games. Hey, it's opening day as we're recording this. Yep. <laughs> and I haven't had. And it. I hope your I hope your local team won, unless it was against a Chicago team. What do you think of it? I like it. It's very reminiscent of like an old style. Like, I think I've I've had it before. Old style or MGD. It's got that. It's got that old school lager feel to it, and it's it's categorized yeah. as a cream ale. But I have had this. I believe. It definitely rings like ball game sitting there drinking a beer. Yeah. <laughs> if they yeah, don't, and, and, if like if if at Wrigley or it's always Comiskey to me, um, don't. If they don't serve this, they should. Like, somebody should serve this. Somewhere. I wonder because Comiskey, uh, Sox Park, <laughs> uh, guaranteed rate, uh, USL, uh, they do have that craft beer cave. And I, I would hope that they have this beer there. I mean, they have so many other great options. I know Hop Butcher's there and uh, uh, Revolution's there, I believe. Yeah, Revolution has their own, like, like little tap room. Oh, nice. There last time I went, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a missed opportunity by local um, Chicago baseball teams if they're not drinking that. Because you're right, it is a cream ale, but it does it is very reminiscent of like 
being at a ballpark, like those types of beer, like your standard go-to beers. And I really like that about craft breweries who lean into that whole thing of like making a just well-balanced drinkable lager that's, you know, that will appeal to everybody. Because as we've said, you know, sometimes you go to a, a brewery or a craft beer bar and, you know, there was a time where it was all like IPAs and yep. someone who maybe doesn't drink, you know, craft beer would be turned off by that. But having an option like this is fantastic. And even craft beer drinkers like it. I mean, there's there's tons of times when, you know, you just want to have a beer that tastes like beer. Yeah. And because, it, it, like I said, it's 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 a good reminiscent throwback too. And it's not even a throwback because those beers still exist. Yeah. But drinking those beers, like originally, the only thing I can think of, like these are probably a little bit cleaner. They're not mass produced. Um, you know, they're made in smaller batches, obviously. Uh, but it's super, super good. Great head on it. Like when I poured it, it was super foamy and like that died down pretty quickly. But it like reminded me of like, you know, grabbing an MGD when I was a kid. You know, stealing it out, stealing it from my dad's boat, and then getting home and pouring it in my room because it was, you know, it wasn't totally cold because these were in the fridge for about three or four hours. But like, wasn't totally cold, but it wasn't totally warm. It was just like right, and the nice head built on it. It was the same thing. Just I was right like, when you're man, a kid, yeah. I'm in a flashback. I'm like, man, I remember when I was 12 and I got wasted. I never did that when I was 12. I'm pretty sure that one of the first beers, maybe we've talked about this before, but one of the first beers that I ever had with uh, my cousin Kevin and my buddy John was like a warm MGD from the basement at my cousin's house. And I think we we're like seventh or eighth grade. And we all split, like the three of us split it. We were like, yeah, drinking a drinking a beer. And what a terrible like introduction to beer, to like I, a warm I, MGD. I still, I have a, a vivid memory of when you lived over on Talcott and we uh, were... Yes. I think Newport was with us, and we were literally discussing how we were going to get a case of Rolling Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if Man. it ended up being your sister or if we were that hard up for it. Yeah. We drove to the south side and had Andy's sister buy it for us, but I remember like there was we had Rolling Rock that night. Man, I have to check in with my sister because that does. There was a, a period. <laughs> oh man, I want to have Rolling Rock again. There, there's a period I do remember of like in high school where Rolling Rock, Rock was the beer to drink, and I don't know why. Maybe because it was like it's funny because it's a green bottle, so I'm sure it's like pretty skunked. But yeah. I, I just remember that being the beer that I drank the most probably as a teenager. Yeah, there was. I mean, I didn't drink a whole lot, but yeah. I do remember that being the beer of choice. Yeah, there was that. I, I remember. In grammar school, I had a friend, there was, I don't think this beer is made anymore, and I don't know how long it was around for, but I think it was called Red Wolf, um, and he was obsessed with wolves, and was like, dude, when, I get, <laughs> when, I, when I'm 21, that's going to be my beer, it's like Red Wolf, and then like, you know, got into high school, and I'm like, what the hell happened to that Red Wolf beer? Like, uh, Apparently, it still is made, I'm, I'm doing my best Clark right now, um, it is a Anheuser-Busch um, product and it was added november 19th 2002 and last rated on october 6 2022 on uh beer advocate so really it's it's somewhere i don't know where but it's somewhere also there's an ad for kentucky fried chicken's double down sandwich so now i'm hungry i've never had that now there have i i mean it seems interesting yeah i don't know like i value my heart and <laughs> You know, enough to where I I don't know if I can do that to it, which is also the same reason I don't get into, like, the burgers with, like, the donuts as the bun. Like, I know, but I mean, I'm like, in theory, it sounds like it would be great. Yeah. Oh, it sounds fantastic. I I feel like that's like a one and done. That's like me with fried Oreos. I think in my entire life I've had. Oh, excuse me. The burp just crept up. Um Two fried Oreos. And I work festivals uh, in the summer where I'm like stationed right next to these places and normally trade beer for food nobody uh, heard that though we, we don't do that <laughs> um and i remember one time us like the people i was working with we got they gave us like a whole bunch of random food and then there was like just like you know like those little um paper fry uh holders uh containers yeah that was just filled with like 10 fried oreos and that was the first time i had it and i had one i said that was so delicious i never have to have another one again you know like same thing with anything else that's like deep fried as far as like a Snickers or <laughs> any other. Yeah. I've never had a deep fried Snickers, but things like that, I'm like, I could have it once 
I don't think I ever have to have that again. Yeah, I've, I've never done the deep fried Snickers, and I think, and I don't know if I've gotten a deep fried Oreo anywhere else except for Vegas. There used mm. to be a spot in Old Vegas on Fremont Street. Like they tore all of that down and like put it's all commercialized and like crap now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still fine, but they like the you know the last like you know strip club that was like <laughs> there forever. Uh, R.I.P. Glitter Gulch was like gone and then like <laughs> I forget the name of the casino but it was right on the corner there but they had like the first time I went in there I think I had to have been with Matt Seashan and he's like dude you gotta get the fried Oreos and I was like okay and it was like a dollar for like five of them and I was Jesus. like cool and they served footballs of beer or what? mixed drinks and it was like five dollars or ten dollars or something maybe it was ten dollars to get the the football, and then get it filled with whatever you want. And then it was $5 Jesus. for refills. Oh, my God. Because I remember T- uh, Tobias from Rabbit Brewing. He was there. Shout out. And he was drinking uh, whatever he had mixed with 151. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. We got back to, like, we got, back to, we got back to Matt's car. And, like, I'll, all I remember is I have this vivid memory of Tobias just like sitting in the corner of the parking lot, like throwing up. We're like, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Tobias, we had to spill your story there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was him. If it's not, sorry, <laughs> Tobias. Still a good story though. Um, hey, I was gonna say uh, real quick: is there a? If not, I, I've pulled it up. But is there a description of beer for ball games from Off Color on the can? Um. Just so people know. Not really. Um, literally, I, I, I like could... it's got the description, oh, yeah. and then it says, hey, Dad, want to have a beer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got it pulled up here. <clears throat> it's the tasting notes. It says, while most of our beers for stuff, uh, which, by the way, we've talked about uh, a lot of the beers for <clears throat> different types of things uh, on the podcast, and I still really want to do like a just a big like beers for episode. You know what? We need to do that this year. We're going to do that this year. we got to do, do a beers, beers, beers for whatever beer. food with that food. Like yeah, or just or order activity. a smorgasbord of food. I mean, there's also activities, you know. Oh, yeah. Like there's there's food activities, uh, things like that. So we can run a marathon because there's beers for marathon. There's beers for basketball or beer for hoops. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm gonna read this right here. Beer for ball games. Not tasting notes. A marathon. <laughs> While most of our beers for stuff are inspired by things that are not beer, we could not imagine quaffing anything but a light-bodied but flavorful brew. Uh, what is that? Oh, man. Watching <laughs> watching the font. I, I got to get glasses. Watching nine innings from the bleacher section. This American-style cream ale features a light malt character with flavors of cornflake cereal. A light Ooh. hop aroma contributes to nuanced floral pepper and grapefruit rind notes. Bread notes from the yeast left in the beer rounds out the mouthfeel. There's a secret techniques thing. I, I'll read that, too. You know, might as well. As one of the first styles of beer actually conceived in the United States in the mid-1800s, our cream ale is designed to make America's pastime proud by using only American-produced malt uh, and corn with classic American hops, Cascade and Willamette or Willamette. Uh, we even use the best American water. Sorry, Fiji. That's right. That's Chicago water, baby. <laughs> and it's a session beer because it is only 4.2%, 18 IBUs. They use two-row flaked barley, caramel malt, dextrin malt, flaked corn, nugget, Willamette, Cascade, nugget. and hey, Dad, want to have a beer? Available baseball season. So, yeah, as far as um, beers for, this is another great, like, beer for beer. You know, they do beer for, like I said, beer for hoops, beer for golf, uh, beer for marathons, beer for bowling. I think there's a beer for... Is there a beer for lounging? Yeah, I... That's the only beer for I didn't like, and we can talk about that another time if we ever get the beer for lounging, but uh, I was not too... It, it was supposed to be a pale ale, and I I, I, I don't think I like the yeast strain that they yeah. use, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it was a batch I didn't really get into, but Brandon, how many baseballs <laughs> out of five or ten, because ne- number, we, we changed the scale, it's either five, I'm staying, five, I'm five, staying with ten. five, I'm going four, yeah, I'm staying with five too, yeah, four baseballs, I like that, yeah, nice, like, I think, you know, I don't three, have it in seven, front five, of me, to four. you didn't check into this when you had it, I didn't, no, I, I remember having this, wow. I just looked, but that oh. being said, what are you drinking? It's very rare that I don't check in a beer. <laughs> I didn't check in beer for family gatherings either because that malt liquor one was very good. Um, I decided, and, and, and maybe you have this, but I, I decided to start with this because I feel like this beer to me uh, is the sign of spring and mm-hmm. summer right around the corner. 
Uh, and as of this recording, 10 days ago, there was a day dedicated to it, like every year. I went with Bell's Oberon. Ooh. Baby. I almost Bell's grabbed Oberon, that. American almost grabbed that. It was the first beer that I grooved. Uh, I grooved. <laughs> my first beer uh it's the first beer that i grabbed uh from beer on the wall when i saw it i was like oh man that 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 screams warm weather to me and wheat ales to me as much as ipas those were the first two styles that i fell in love with even with like especially with brewing too like a wheat ale is so not easy but it's a forgiving style that it's easy to stick to and it's just it's great and i don't know Many craft beer drinkers, friends of mine, or friends of yours, friends of ours, who haven't had Oberon, let alone enjoy it. And I feel like it might have been, other than Hawker Shore, I feel like Bell's Oberon was like the first, like when I was at a bar, the first like real craft beer that I ever had. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, I know I ha- like, as far as wheat beers go, I think... Blue Moon strikes out as being like one of the first, and I don't know if. Oh, uh, you might be right. That Blue Moon might be. The I don't, and I don't know point. when Blue Moon was, you know, taken over by Coors, but right. I remember it's still a very good beer. Yeah, I, I, but and I remember back then though it was, it wasn't it wasn't common. So having it at some place, I was like, oh cool, they got Blue Moon. Like when yeah. in, you're, you know, and that was kind of like a big thing in I think in Chicago because, you know, craft beer was growing. But before it like took off the way it was, every every place had you know old style Miller Light, yeah. MGD, Bud Light on tap, and then like their different offering was <clears throat> Blue Moon. Like that was yeah. something new, and like you know people were like, oh, hey, throw an orange in there, that's cool. Like I liked it, you know. Yeah, I that was the thing I liked about um, Hawker Shore was that you threw a lemon in it, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, that too. I'm actually looking up when Blue Moon was acquired. Hacker Shore, I, I drank a lot of, especially living, uh, growing up in Lincoln Square. I was walking down. We had the Chicago Bra House. We had the Hooten Bar. They had all of that stuff. It was Hacker Shore and Julius Ector and all the all the like heavy hitting German beers. Uh, this is crazy. Oh, okay. Called Belly Side Belgian White. The beer was created by Kefila Brewer of Sandlot Brewing. At Coors Field in Denver. So, technically, it's always been, like, a Miller Coors product. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's it, it, it launched in 1995 and originally brewed in Golden, Colorado. It's still a fantastic beer, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. Sorry. We, I can sidetrack here. Um, yeah. Bell's Oberon is easily a – I put it up there with Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale. Like, it's kind of a – not kind of. It's very much a staple of what, cra- like when craft beer started growing, like those brands, like flagship beers. And I don't, I don't know if Oberon is a flagship beer, so don't quote me on that because I don't have Clark to back me up on this <clears throat> and make me sound smart. But um, Oberon and and Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale, those are like two like big staples of craft beer when craft beer was like starting to become readily available. Uh, in in stores and in bars, and it just became those beers that I would, you know, just put to like, oh, this is craft beer. Like this is what this is what I'm going to drink because I don't want to drink all the other stuff. This is something different. Um, and and I still, I mean, I think maybe I have an Oberon once a year. Um, I think there's some random times where I buy it, but I and every time I have it, I'm always like, oh, I got to remember to buy Oberon. But I, you know me, always got to try something new. Got to remember that. There are staple beers like this that are, are still um, delicious. I'm going to read the beer info here. Mm-hmm. Oberon is a wheat ale that embodies everything we love about summer or spring. Uh, they don't have that. I added that. Uh, brewed with just wheat malt, hops, water, and our signature housed ale yeast, Oberon has a bright orange color and citrusy smooth and oh, and is citrusy smooth and refreshing. It is seasonal. It's their wheat series. Bill March. Well, this says 2022. Available in March to September while supplies last. It's 5.8, wow, 5.8 ABV. Uh, shelf life is six months. Water, barley, wheat, hops, house, alias. They don't, they don't tell me what that's all about, unfortunately. It's um, yeah, but there you go. It's it's interesting that they 
they pinned it as a a summer beer when O'Brien Day is in like March. <laughs> yeah, it was March twentieth this year, like the day before spring, and it's available yeah. like starting in spring. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not knocking nice, it; it's a fantastic yeah, beer. Yeah, but it's definitely but it's a funny description, and it's definitely easy to ease into in the summer, and it's a seasonal. So I don't think that would be, I don't think that would qualify that as a flagship beer. Correct. Like Two Hearted definitely has to be flagship. <clears throat> oh yeah, you're right. I didn't even think of that. And then they have like Calum- I know that- Kalamazoo Stout and their Porter. Like those are their year rounds. Like I feel like, and those have been around forever. So whether they consider them flagships or not, those are their year rounds. And I would definitely consider them. What's super cool is that towards the end of the year, they or at least they've done it maybe the last two years, they changed the packaging as the, like the sun is setting, which was super cool. Oh, I remember cool. seeing that. <clears throat> yeah, where it was like, the sun was setting because summer is almost over. I'm yeah. looking at the what, what was uh, on tap this year for Oberon Day, and they had pineapple, jalapeno Oberon, peach Oberon, blood orange, creamsicle, watermelon, chipotle, fruit punch, and raspberry hibiscus Oberon. Ooh. So those all sound very fun. A wheat beer is easy. Not easy, but it's a nice blank palette or a blank slate um, to add stuff like that, especially fruit, uh, too. So I... I you know what? You were talking about doing some French pressing. I wish we had a uh, a Randall. I yeah, know, Randall to to do some of that. But I'm I, sure we can mess around with some. I knew a guy that had a Randall. Um, uh, he ran. <clears throat> he actually ran Chicago Brew Bus for a while, and then he had Bucket huh. List Brewing. Um, and I poured with him at a fest somewhere. I want to say in Schaumburg, possibly. Uh, and he brought a Randall with him. We hooked it up to the jockey box. And he I think had, he told me this. Story, he had a yeah. weed ale, and we. Randled pineapple and jalapeno through this weed ale, and it was fantastic. It blew our mind, but it was fantastic. the The funny and or disgusting part of it was we had a dump bucket there, <laughs> and we at one point we finally just dumped the the Randall out into the dump bucket where everyone else had been throwing their beers. Some drunk guy came by and he's like, "Oh, pineapple!" And he took pineapple oh, out of it God. and ate it. <laughs> That's disgusting. So every every time every time I see Kevin, it's like. He's like, dude, remember the guy who ate the pineapple out of the fucking dump bucket? I'm like, yeah, that was gross. <laughs> like, everyone I, I, just stopped and was like, like, all of the other breweries were like, what the fuck just happened? And this guy's like, what? Big ass piece of pineapple. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> it's funny, right before you started that story, and you said, oh, someone I, I, I knew, and I, I thought it was somebody else, so I like made like a cringy noise. I don't know who this person is, so nobody take that as a, I know who Kevin is. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I got to say that, like, by the way, that is disgusting. Um, Oberon still, like, it, it it's, an, it's an easy drinking beer. It's a good beer also to bring to, like, any party or going to someone's house for dinner or something. Like, it's it's an approachable beer for a lot of people. Agreed. You know? A wheat, wheat ale just kind of does that. Like, a wheat ale is a nice way to, to have some craft beer, and, and Bell's does it. Very properly. So, if you were ranking this beer, how many bells would you give it? Ooh, bells! I thought you were gonna go suns. Bells. Um, you know, man, it's and this is like I'm rating this just based on the beer, not like of all time. Mm-hmm. For a wheat ale and for how good it is, man, that's like a four point five, four seven five. Like it's just a delicious beer. Like I- I'm not rating that against other beers that I rate so high that I'm just so specific. Like overall, as a beer, this is so amazing. But for what this beer is, as a as a weed ale, and and for how long it's been around, and just what it is, I mean, that's it's almost a perfect beer, you know. So I'm gonna go four point seven five. Uh, you know, four point seven five to a four point eight. Ooh, we'll do that uh, for Bell's over on weed. I mean, it's it's so good. I'm glad I started with that beer. Um, cause I got some other ones that might destroy my pla- palate, not destroy it, but <laughs> adjust it to a certain way. All right, Brandon, uh, you want to start this, uh, second beer as well? Do you mind? Yeah, that's fine. What do you got, um, buddy? I decided to go with a local favorite, a oh. beer that we enjoy. Oh boy. A beer that we just found out its name will have to be changed. Oh, no. Oh, man, I'm so jealous that you have that right now. I went with Old Irving Brewing's Oni. As you guys know, that is one of my favorite beers, period. But one of my favorite beers from Old Irving. And you guys, just so you know, we are not sponsored by Old Irving. We really do just love their beers, and they are great people. 
<laughs> so I went with this too. Talk because, about it. Um, Talk about Noni Man because I love that beer. I love that it's a lager. I love that there's that good hop bite there, but it's it's got the body of a lager. It's yeah, not. It's not. Sorry, I was to say it's yeah. not like. The hoppiness of it is not like super bitter. It's it's like the smallest hop bite you can get. Yeah, but at the same time, it's not like super heavy. Like if you're drinking like you know a good like traditional style lager, very totally. light in body. The it looks like they use yeah, it's Amarillo and Citra. Plays really really nicely on here. Can artwork is is fantastic. Super cool. Probably shout out to Tim for that. I think he probably did that. Um. And unfortunately, they 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 got a cease and desist. They have to change. The name. <laughs> have to change the name. Um, yeah. I've never had this in a can. I've had it on really. Drink. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, never never in a can. Uh, I've ha- I think every time I've gone there and they've had it on tap, I've I've had it because um, it's just so good. It, it really is. Like it it is one of my favorite beers in Chicago. Like. 100 percent like i wish i've said like a lot i wish that oni was just available uh year round or it is i mean for the most part like they brew it every now and then then it goes away for a little bit and then it comes back i wish it was brewed as much as beezer is brewed which beezer is fantastic but i would oni would be for sure my go-to beer all the time in chicago no offense to any other breweries but that is like my jam i just love it it's so good it smells amazing too you know, so it looks like they've changed this to now be year round. What? Yeah. So I, last time I got when I got that keg of Beezer, I remember or no, not the Beezer before that. I got Della, I believe. Yes, Della uh, was the first one, first keg that I got from them. And I looked at their beer schedule, and Oni was on there for just like June, July, August, and I think half of September. Mm-hmm. And now it's year round. It's on oh there. Oh my god. Year-round. Matthew, we're going to have to talk because I didn't know that. So I think I mentioned this on the last episode. Please bring that to uh, Chicago on tap. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have an empty keg from you guys that I need to return. Possibly get I, it filled I mean, with some I, Oni. <laughs> I was going to say, man, maybe that's the one you go with. Maybe Oni's the next one. If that's the case, I might come by and fill up uh, a, a crowd not a crowler but the 32 howler a howler yeah a 32 ounce howler if that's okay just to bring home just so i have some you know on tap uh it's, that's it's gonna be that or i end up with that keg of bourbon county we'll see <laughs> Ooh, let's not talk about that yet that's a secret surprise it's not we're gonna do some french press beers uh yeah so oni was definitely a lager that again we can get over how many times i've said it i just like lagers now um but it was a lager like that was kind of, that, that's different that it definitely like opened my eyes to realizing there are different styles of lagers out there that everybody would like and this mm-hmm. is one of them it's it's one of the few dark lagers that i love like it's not I even absolutely super love dark no no it's not a dark lager but i'm saying it's one of the like uh, it's not a dark lager oh, yeah. that i love cuz i love dark lagers it 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 looks like i mean it's it's yellow it's straw colored you know it's it's God, it's so delicious. I'm jealous that you got that. I, I was wondering if you were going to grab it, too. I don't remember seeing it at Beer on the Wall. I saw some other... Uh, there might be an older Irving beer, actually, in my lineup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I don't remember seeing Oni at Beer on the Wall. Um, but I definitely want to get some next week. Um, so, how many Japanese... Demons, <laughs> would you give this? That's terrible. How many Japanese masks? Demon masks? Uh, how many? What, what, what are we doing? What, what, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I have derailed. I have derailed so hard. Uh, how many Onis would you give this? <laughs> um, funny, it's funny. Um, I, I've never checked this in. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I would have figured I would have done that, uh, but I'm definitely about four and a half. Yeah, I does it show what I what yep. I gave this? Um, Sorry, I know you just put your phone down. Uh, and four and a half, this, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four and a half. It, I mean, it's I, there's no reason why that shouldn't be a five for me, to be honest. Like, it, it's just so good. I feel like I talked more about the beer than you did. Yeah, I, I'm I'm like four and a half, maybe four point six on this uh, because this. 
when I want a lager and I want a little bit more, this is 100% what I would go to because it's got the body, Absolutely. it's got the feel, um, but it's just and got the that aroma. S- yeah, I it, love the aroma. And it's got that slight hop bite to it that it's just yeah. phenomenal. That also wouldn't be off-putting to anybody who just drinks lagers all the time. Like, if you didn't tell anybody it's a dry hopped lager and just gave it to them, they're like, oh, yeah, that might be a little bitter, but I think anybody can drink that. That's definitely another approach. Yeah, you can get past that. It's not and that's, it's not a bad bitter or no, overpowering no, no, no. bitter. And it's a fantastic example of a spring beer. Uh, I'm going local as well with mine. Uh, this is one I've not had. Uh, and I saw it, and I said, you know what? This also kind of goes with the the style of springtime, warmer weather. So mm-hmm. why not go with Midwest Coast? Jeez, uh, oh, what is it called? Hanging Curve Blonde Ale. Ooh. The Midwest Coast is here in uh, Chicago. Never had it. Um, so I, I decided to get that because a blonde ale is, again, like so far, like four beers that we've gone through. They're approachable beers. They're easy drinking beers. They're not too high ABV. They're not too hoppy. But they all have their own, like, they have their own, like, taste profiles. I mean, they're different styles of, of, of ales. Yeah. We've got a blonde ale. we got a cream ale. got a lager and a wheat ale. So, like, we're covering, like, you know, real nice warm weather beers. Yeah. Beers that you could drink maybe in the yard while having a fire on a warm spring day. Uh, so hanging or while mowing, mowing your lawn. Ah, yes, exactly. Uh, so Hanging Curve from Midwest uh, Midwest Coast Brewing here in Chicago. Uh, the description is perfect for warm weather hangs at the ballpark. This blonde ale is belt high and waiting to be crushed. That sounds appropriate. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> It really is. Like, uh, Brandon, I don't know if you can see. I know my lighting down here is, is, is terrible. It kind of looks like the same color as Oni. Yeah, a little bit. Nice straw color. Um, it's a nice head on it. I don't know what it's hop with. It's not a strong like hop aroma. Uh, I love Blondales as well. I think Have you had this before? No, this is my first time. Mm. Going in for another sip. Um, much like, I think, I don't know. I don't know what to compare this to. There's a nice bitterness to it that fades quickly. And then you get like this uh, kind of bready, not like yeasty bready, but like grain uh, graininess to it, uh-huh. but also it's not super sweet. It's it's easy to drink. It's it's light, nice body to it, medium to light body. Um, smells um, smells like beer, and that's not an insult. Like it's, it smells I, I love, like beer. I love how like that's used as a descriptor, but you also have to like put in the disclaimer of like that's not an insult. Like yeah, it's not because I don't want people to think like oh, I would mean like sometimes. <laughs> I mean, sometimes the smell of beer could be like not great. It's you know, alcohol, but this buddy. Is like... What did you fucking expect? <laughs> <laughs> you moron! Um, ah, it's fantastic, man. I think you would love this. I think you would really like it, especially with the last two that you grabbed. Um, this is right up there. This is this is just a great, fantastic beer. Um, I there's a handful of Midwest Coast beers that I've had, and you've had some because you made it to uh, Dan Hip Hops. Uh, birthday earlier this year. Do you remember what you had at Midwest Coast? Um, I believe I checked in. Let's I know see. I've had their, I think I've had their brown ale, and I really like their brown ale. Because uh, they also use, I think, an English yeast. I think I had their brown ale, t- uh, brown ale too. Um, I think there was something else you had. I don't remember what it is. I'm trying to Clark, look. we need you. We need you to be on the pulse. <laughs> this is my this. first time navigating through um, the web. Yeah, the, the web version of Untapped. So the only thing I te- uh, did check into is Vertical Canine. The, what kind of beer is that? The Imperial Double IPA. Whoa, you went you went big that day. I did. <laughs> I did. Well, it was a rainy day and something needed to happen. And then I got a crawler the- of something to go. And I feel- oh, yeah, that's right. You did get something. I don't know. And I feel like we did what that on an episode or... A pumpkin beer. Was it? We got their pumpkin beer, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Or an Oktoberfest. Oh, yep. I think it was the Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. <clears throat> Listeners, let us know. <laughs> what did we drink? Uh, yeah, I again, another really solid beer from them. I still need to go and check them out. Uh, I'm so happy that there's another like solid, again, another solid Chicago brewery just available to us making beers like this. <clears throat> and this is the perfect, like you said, like lawnmower beer. Or, uh, you know, as, as it gets warmer outside, just to hang out and, 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 and kick back and have this. I don't know if it's year-round. I don't know if it's seasonal. But um, 
Blondale's the way to go, man. This is this is delicious. Agreed. If I had to rate this out of five coasts, <laughs> there's four. <laughs> Uh, out of five coasts, if there was another coast that we didn't know, <clears throat> for the style and this particular beer, for being a spring beer, this is another like 4.5, 475. <clears throat> this is delicious. Like, this is an easy drinking beer, and I would love to have this. If I had this and Oberon in my fridge and some Oni, ooh, ooh. man, now we're getting crazy. Now it's a party. And beer for ball game? Oh my gosh. Now it's crazy. It's crazy summertime, springtime here at my house. <laughs> Um, all right, let's uh, let's take a quick break. And we'll come back and maybe have another beer or two. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll I've, see. I've, got, I've got two half beers now just sitting in front of me. <laughs> we'll be right back. Meals on Wheels Chicago presents Chicago on Tap, Thursday, April 27th at Theater on the Lake, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Join us for a night of beer and bites from over 20 of Chicago's top breweries and restaurants and help raise crucial funds to feed our neighbors in need. You'll get to try 60-plus of the local brews and sample delicious food, all while supporting a good cause. This is an event you won't want to miss. To get your tickets, go to MealsOnWheelsChicago.org, click on Events, and look for Chicago on tap. And if you'd like to save $15 on your ticket with a promo code, be sure to email us at info at themaltinghour.com and put Chicago on tap in the subject, and we'll send you the promo code. Cheers, and hope to see you there. And we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that little break. Hope you got to pee or something. I don't know. If you guys not do not if you're break. driving, though. If you're driving, yeah, don't pee. Well do done. most of you guys just skip through the break? Like when I when there's commercials during some my podcast, I just hit the. Actually, you know what? There might not have been music on this one. There was an ad on this one, and it was an ad for Meals on Wheels beer <laughs> on Chicago on tap. You better not have skipped through that. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to remind everybody, Chicago on tap, uh, on tap, not on tap. Chicago on tap, April twenty seventh, uh, theater on the lake. Six. PM. Remember to email us. Yep. Uh, info at uh, info, info at the malting, at the malting hour. hour. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on on this episode? Info at the malting hour dot com. Just put like meals on wheels or beer on tap, something like that, and we'll give you a, a little promotional code to save you fifteen bucks. And again, if you don't end up saving the fifteen bucks. It's totally worth it. It's going to be awesome. If you listen to the last episode, you know a handful of the breweries that are going to be there. It's going to be so much fun. I know Brandon and I are both looking forward to it. Uh, apparently, everybody from Old Irving is looking forward, uh, forward to it, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think it'll be a fun time. Yeah, it's crazy how quickly this month has wrapped up and we're, you know. It's insane. As of this episode, we are in uh, April now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we're recording this two days before April begins. Yeah. So, Tony, uh, what did you choose oh, for your third me. beer? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, I stayed local for this one. Uh, I grabbed this because I I think I knew that this was a beer that was happening, but apparently uh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know it actually existed. <laughs> and when I saw it, I'm like, I got to get this because... Uh, there is a newer venue here in Chicago. It's called the Salt Shed, which is taken over the old Morton Salt Building, where there's concerts, uh, I think, have been happening since last year. And I am going to, like, four or five shows. Uh, wait, one, two, three, four. I'm going to four shows this year at Salt Shed. Haven't been there. My wife's been there. Laura's been there. And she said it's awesome. She was outside. I've had some other friends go there. I didn't know that this was a collaboration because... It's called Dawn of the Shed Pipeworks Brewing. Pipeworks did a collaboration with Salt Shed. And I'll read this to you. Dawn of the Shed is American Pale Ale with Galaxy and Motuika hops. It's 5.3% ABV. With spring right around the corner, we've teamed up with our pals at the Salt Shed to bring you Dawn of the Shed. This is incredibly well-balanced, easy-drinking American Pale Ale that brings on amplified notes of tropical lime, peach, and uh, and ripe guava. So this is right up my alley. Ooh. Like, You know me. I love pale ales. We love pale ales. Pale Ale is one of the best styles ever created. Pipeworks did it. It's a collaboration with Salt Shed. So I had to get this. And right off the bat, when I crack it open, it's got a nice uh, nice citrusy kind of – it's a very fruity smell, but it's like there's a hoppy bitterness to it that's really nice uh, in the aroma. And upon my first sip, it's a damn 
good, easy drinking beer. Those those notes of like tropical, a little bit of peach. I still don't know what guava tastes like, so I can't really hit on that. But like, <laughs> there's a light bitterness to it. Guava's like good. it's on the tip of my. <laughs> what's that? Guava's good. <laughs> I, I should try it. Um, there's a, 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 a nice light bitterness to it. Uh, it doesn't say what the IBUs are uh, here on Untapped, <laughs> and I couldn't find it on their website. Too new. But it it's a nice light bitterness that I I feel like is another approachable beer. And again, pale ale is a style that just to me, I mean, it's, it's an all the time style, but it does scream like, Hey, it's, it's spring or summer, you know, like this is, this is a beer that you want to have. Um, so it's, it's nice. And I hope that it's a beer that is available at salt shed. Um, like I said, I've got four concerts there this year, Brandon, one of those concerts I wanted to ask, was that it's a picture of that beer at the salt shed. (laughs) <laughs> oh, fantastic. So I can get it there out of the four times that I go there. Yeah, my, Brandon, my, there's one, there, there's one go, show that I wanted to ask you to, to come to. Which one's that? You can get tickets tomorrow if you want. I, I didn't think about it when I got my ticket on Wednesday. So run, run the jewels. The jewels. Yeah. If you want to go, I'm going, on, go. That thir- I'm going, I'm going on the Thursday. Okay. It was only 50 bucks for the ticket. Um, so my note about uh, the the Salt Shed beer. What's the, what's the actual? Oh, Dawn of the Shed. So (laughs) Garrett from Pipeworks posted about it on Facebook uh, back in like mid February that they were asked to do this collaboration pretty last minute. Wow. Um, And they had a couple of weeks to basically get this brewed, like come up with the recipe, get it brewed and have it ready for like the opening weeks of, you know, the indoor space at the salt shed. Sounds like my brew days. Yeah. And they did it. They did it. And according to you, they nailed it. it. Sounds like they knocked it out. So yeah, it's it's really good, man. You would like it. It's it's got a nice fruity flavor to it. I keep burping. I apologize. There's a little haze to it. It's like another like orangish gold uh, straw like color. Um, it's really tasty. It's easy drinking. Uh, this is a perfect like concert beer. You yeah, know? It really is. I love it. That's cool. Um, if I had to rate this, uh, how many salt you know, rocks? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that, but because Pipeworks always uses how many wrenches? unicorns <laughs> or unicorns? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I like unicorns. Uh, there's more unicorns than ninjas when it comes to Pipeworks. Uh, I-, I will rate this on unicorn horns, even though I mean there are some. There are I don't know if you can see this, Brandon. There are unicorns on the the label right there. Yeah. Can you tell? Yep. I know it's kind of blurry. Um, out of unicorn horns, out of five, man, for the style. I feel like it leans a little bit more. Ah, no. Shit. This is a 4-4. Four, 4-5. Four. Four, five. Four, five. Four, five unicorn horns on this. Uh, I love it, man. Dawn, Dawn of the Shed. Uh, fantastic. And I can't wait to go to the Salt Shed. Also, for those who don't know, uh, Goose Island Clybourne is going away. The original brewery. R.I.P. <laughs> the tap room. Uh, but they are moving next door to... The salt shed, so that should be kind of fun. It'd be nice to see uh, what they do. I'm assu- my thought is is that they'll probably do some concerts there with them, uh, sponsored by Goose Island. But who knows? I don't know. Uh, I do know that they serve a lot of local beer, and it seems like everybody who's coming to town, they're going to the salt shed. Brandon, what's your next beer for spring? I also went with a a local brewery, and I am drinking Beguiles <laughs> Freebird. <laughs> Oh, nice. It was funny as you were looking down. I'm like, is he looking up on his phone? Does he not remember no. what he has? Uh, Freebird's a blonde ale, right? Or is it an IPA? Uh, it says American Pale Ale. There. Ah, look at that. We both ended on a pale ale. How nice. Have you had Freebird before? Um, I swear I have. just haven't checked it in. But I know I've yeah, had free- it before. If I'm not mistaken. You haven't checked it in either, apparently. If I'm not mistaken, and any avid listeners... Was this one of the beers on the decades of pale ales? I feel like it was. I'm almost positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I. I, I feel. Are, are we at least talked about it? I got. I got to look back. I got. I got to look at this right now. I'm. I'm looking it up. Oh, my episode guide. Oh, jeez. Our website's pretty great, but I have no idea. So how to, I looked. I mean, I know how to look. So I searched. On our so unless we spelt it wrong, I searched beguile on our website, which is my like source of information. The only beguile beer we've officially drank on the show was Dicey Riley. What? Yeah. 
Come on. Ah, I'm almost positive. I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive. Uh, I, I, I'm not see. I can't, I'm clicking on my internet is running. Re- oh, of course it goes to the wrong episode. Uh, my internet's running a little slow right now, so I can't really look at it. But I, I do enjoy that beer, Brandon. What are you thinking about this beer right now? Tell us. I love about it. it. Um, it's it's the perfect embodiment of what I would want. Embodiment of what I would want a pale ale to be. Super clean. Um, like even. If you can see it, like that golden color, it's just like perfectly clear, like crystal clear. Wow, right? that's super clear. Um, the hop bitterness is just light and slightly fruity, slightly bitter. Um, it's not a dry beer. It's got some juiciness to it. Uh, and it's super easy drinking, man. Like um, really light on the palate. And I like I'm drinking this one faster than I drink the Oni. Although I had a 16 ounce of Oni, so that's a little bit strange. But, um, but yeah, it's super smooth. Like, yeah, it's like an idiot. It's super, super smooth. I like it. I'm almost, So I, I look back at our episode, and the only thing that we have uh, are the funny things that um, <laughs> Kevin wrote uh, about the, the decades. I, I'm almost positive we had this. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, but I do Neither remember. Neither of us checked it in then. <sighs> Yeah, that's, I mean, it's not unheard of. But um, I have had Freebird before. It's a fantastic pale ale. It's very, very good. And I feel like it's a great example of what a pale ale can and and, and should be. And again, like, we've talked about pale ales before. That was the beer uh, style we did with Howard Street. Um, Sarcasm starts at 10 a.m. Um and same thing with this, with the the dawn of the salt shed. Like this, th- that style to me screams spring and summer. Uh, like you can have a pale ale all the time, but you know once you get through the winter and the cold months, and you want to have like a beer that still has something to it that's not necessarily like a lager or a wheat ale or a cream ale or a blonde ale, a pale ale is the way to go because I feel like that's like how you're getting to the end end of spring into yeah. summer. That were just talking about the decades of pale ale thing. I was like, we're gonna have Kevin on again. It's been a while. It has. Um, he's been on twice. Oh, Aggie, how's it going? He's been on twice, uh, and it would be nice to have him back on because it'd be fun to do. Uh, he's it, since he's been on, his relationship with craft beer has grown. One of the styles that he's grown to love. Girl. <laughs> Uh, is barley wine. He loves barley wines. Was it something that I had? Bef- I, did I have something that I brought over that was a barley wine that we wanted to share with him? There was something I had when I stopped by when you you two were hanging out and I came and hung out with you guys. Oh yeah, I forgot what I brought. <sighs> Possibly, I am actually saving, and, and, and I, I would like you to be a part of it as well. Um, if not, I know you have like maybe two of them. The <laughs> Goose Island. Uh, two-year-old old Fitzgerald ah, yes. barley wines. <laughs> I, I have that. That is one of the Bourbon Counties from last year that I still have. I'm saving that uh, for him <clears throat> to share as well because that was one of my favorites as well. Um, but, yeah, I, I, how many – so going back to Freebird, how many birds would you give this? Uh, I'm sitting about 3.75, four, Interesting. four birds. Is there anything about it that you don't like? Not really, no. Um, which, it, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm maybe I'm not being as generous. Like, so I think I'm leaning closer to the four. How um, about this? So just base it off of what you expect from a pale ale. You know what? Yeah, four. Four. I wasn't trying to put. I wasn't trying. No, to no, push no, no, no. I get it too. And I'm like, I, I have to put myself in that mindset when I'm rating things because it's very hard. You know. It, it gets harder, like especially during episodes when you've had so many different beers. Um, when you, that's why I have to- a hard time rating beers when we go when I go back like two days later and check them into Untapped. <clears throat> I feel like I need to like not rate them because I don't remember what I said. Yeah, well, and that's why. Well, especially like during Stout Fest, that's why I put that sheet up so I could just quickly just drop in numbers. Good idea. And not even like think about it. And then that's what I used when I went back and checked in stuff. Oh, that was smart. I I went back to that to verify names of beers and what I had because I had written down uh, some of them, uh, but yeah. you know, I didn't remember all of them. Yeah. I think, I think pale ale is a good way or a good beer to represent spring. I think it's a, 
it speaks, I mean, to you and I, like we obviously have similar taste in what we thought a spring beer would be. What I didn't do, uh, there's two beers left that I have. I had a, oh God, Cushy Blueberry, I think Mm -hmm. is what it is, from Old Irving uh, that I haven't had yet because it's got blackberry and blueberry in it. And then the other beer, uh, oh, I don't have it up. I thought I did. It's a sketchbook Dunkelbach. Ooh. And I feel like that's, I'm surprised neither one of us did a Maybach for this episode. I grabbed one. Ah, nice. Yeah, I figured like a Bach beer is also a nice like springtime beer because you're coming out of the winter into spring, but you still have like here in Chicago as we're recording this, tomorrow it's going to be like 63 with thunderstorms. And then Saturday, we have a wintry mix of snow and rain. It's going to be like 40 degrees. And then all next week is going to be in the 60s. By the time this episode comes out, it's like... Yeah, Sunday is supposed to be in the 60s. That's where we're debating. So we're we're, we're pressing on to spring. But Saturday, it's a good day to have a box. It's rainy. It's cold. So the reason I didn't do... So I actually got... uh, I went old school. I got an Ayunger Maybach. Ooh. Oh man, and that would have been awesome. Yeah, but it was like seven and a half percent. It's like yeah. also not great for a Thursday night. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna save that one. I feel like there's never. I I don't know what I've said in, in past episodes, but springtime is a really fun time to explore lighter options. Like even like that's why I got the cushy blueberry because I felt like a sour blueberry. You know, when, when we do dry January, I, I there's two years in a row I did a sour beer right after or during dry January to drink in February because I felt like that was a nice transition from having, like, big, heavy stouts and winter warmers and <clears throat> all these other, like, winter cold weather beers than to have, like, a nice, tart, sour, refreshing session beer. And these spring beers are great because it's kind of the same idea. You can kind of bounce around from, like, four to five even five and a half percent i don't think we went above that um you know with with the beers that we drank tonight and then you can if you want to get into those box you probably get a little closer like six or seven percent like you said yeah so it still runs a gamut but like it's nice to have those options and it's especially in the midwest or here in chicago it's so nice to have like a little taste of sunshine waiting for actual like warm weather to, to come and, and, and be around us. It's fantastic. Yeah, so like I was purposeful when I, I did not choose the Maybach just because I'd done all the lighter beers. I'm like, I don't want to end on a higher beer. Like, Yeah, which is why I thought maybe I'd go with the, the sour beer because I thought that would be a nice way to end it. But with the pale ale, I, I, I had to. I had to do it. Because good call by great. both of us. Yeah, it's a good way to end it. Um, hey, man. You got anything else you want to say about spring beers or anything else going on? No, right. just looking forward to spring. Looking forward to to summer, actually. Um, yeah, you know, and us, you know, doing some more. We got some more fun stuff kind of in the works that we're trying to pan out and plan out. Um, and I, I'm excited about, um, yeah, the, the 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 episodes and stuff that we might be pump, pumping out soon. So, yeah, there's a lot. I know it's been a lot of. Uh, <clears throat> It's, I was gonna say a lot of boring stuff. It's not boring. A lot of like stuff of just us talking and like we've had some some fun things, but we do have some things uh, coming down the pipeline with some breweries and some exciting uh, guests. Yeah, some fun stuff coming up. So we appreciate you guys still listening. Uh, again, I'm gonna throw it out there for the Meals on Wheels uh, here in Chicago. Uh, Chicago on Tap, April 27th, 6 p.m. Right. Get your tickets. Uh, man, I should. Why don't I have it in front of me? <laughs> Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up because Laura, Laura had said it so well. Oh, man. I, I'm going to have it. I swear. I swear. I swear I'm going to pull it up right now. Meals on Wheels Chicago. Beer on tap. I mean, if anybody goes to our website and, like, our our landing page on our website is the Shy on Tap logo, just click on that. There you It'll go. take you right to the ordering page. Yes. that's And that's all you need to do. It's from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, a bunch of breweries, a bunch of restaurants. It's going to be so much fun. And that money, uh, it's, it's fundraising money. There's raffles. Uh, you can get some cool stuff. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys should come and hang out with us. Uh, and, you know, we might, I don't know, Brandon, we have to talk about that. Are we going to have some stuff to give to people? I don't know. 
<laughs> I mean, I've got some stickers <laughs> lying around. We can use. I'll have to see. We, we we should probably figure that out. <laughs> yeah. well, we've got time to order, so mm-hmm. we'll be good. That's true, and you guys got uh, time to order right now. Uh, get your tickets, and also, if you want a discount, uh, send an email with uh, Meals on Wheels or something. Just I, I know we said a whole bunch of crazy crap last week, but also just include something that's about Meals on Wheels uh, or Chicago on tap uh, in the email, and we will send you the promo code. You can save 15 bucks. It's going to be awesome, totally worth it. It's a Thursday night. It's going to be so much fun downtown Chicago. Can't wait to see you there. And go drink these beers that we just drank. I've got like... I got a lot of beer behind me <laughs> that I'm either going to dump or drink. I don't know. Good, uh, good luck. Brandon, <laughs> thank you. Brandon, I love you, man. Love you too, bud. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter, bdub81, and on Untapped as bdub drinks beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and Untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter, the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.